While stands the Colosseum, Rome shall stand. When falls the Colosseum, Rome shall fall. And when Rome falls, the world. Welcome to the Colosseum, certainly the greatest amphitheatre ever built. Much of the materials, marble, brick, succo, tuffa, travertine and malta had to be imported from quarries hundreds of miles away. The Colosseum is 158 feet tall, measuring 615 feet by 510 feet, with a base covering 6 acres. It is known for its classical architectural styles, Doric, Arnic and Corinthian. Four stories of beautiful windows, arches and columns. Each of the three exterior floors consisted of 80 arches. The first alone is 34 feet high. This was the Emperor's entrance. It goes straight to his box seat. Four of these boxes were reserved for the Emperor and the Senators. The 176 were for all the other spectators. These walls were once covered with artwork. The floors were made of marble and as routine maintenance, perfume was sprayed throughout these corridors. Thirsty? Running water was put in throughout the Colosseum for those 50 to 75,000 spectators. This was the first to use a canopy or valerium to shade spectators. It consisted of sails being stretched over the amphitheatre by the sailors from nearby ports. The systems now in use in stadiums are pretty much the same as designed for the Colosseum. They were made of cloth and stretched out from the post holders above. These are the pits beneath the arena. Much of the damage here was caused by flooding the arena for the naval battles. These pits were once filled with animals from all over the world. There were elevators run by hand to lift the animals to the surface to attack the slaves and criminals for the crowd's amusement. These animals were imported from all over the world and at great costs especially to keepers and slaves killed by them. Games here consisted of all kinds of entertainment for the veterinara. For the hunting segment, trees were brought in to make it more realistic. It is said that five to 10,000 animals were killed for the dedication of the Colosseum alone. By the end of 523 AD, entire species had disappeared from their native habitat all having been captured or driven away. This includes hippos from Nuba, elephants in northern Africa, and lions from Assyria. The first were part of a sacrificial rite adopted from the Etruscans. It was first introduced to Rome by the sons of Junius Brutus in honour of their father at his funeral by marching three pairs of gladiators. Combat was originally intended to ensure the dead would be accompanied into the next world by their armed attendants and that the spirits of the dead would be appeased. They actually called the gladiatorial part of the game Munus, meaning obligatory offering. There are many categories of gladiators separated by the kind of armor they wore, weapons used, and fighting style. Most of these gladiators stayed in one category, and matches usually involved two different categories. Some more popular ones included Threshian, Secutor, Retorus, and Bisturus.
Gladiators usually condemn criminals, prisoners of war, or slaves brought in for this purpose. Some free men entered this profession as well in hopes of popularity and patronage by wealthy citizens. Although executions were carried out here, there is no evidence any of them were killed here for being Christians. It seems the Christians' martyr stories have been grossly exaggerated. For the Numachia or naval battles, the entire arena was filled with water. They spared no expense using real ships. Before its opening, the Emperor held a hundred days of games. By the end, over a thousand men had died by the sword, drowned, or were torn apart by wild animals, as well as 9,000 wild animals. Although banned in 404 AD, these games carried on about 10 days a year until 523 AD. Admission was free, provided by the Emperor to gain favour with the people. When the Emperor chose a gladiator to live or die, he didn't use the thumbs up or down. Rather, it was more of an in or out. 